It was time. That was the best way to put it. The Hasbun Hotel was quiet. Everyone was out in the city doing stuff. And it was just way too much of a bother spying on them. Especially Angel Dust. Of course, he could always torment his favorite toy husk, but... Nah. The cat team was currently so drunk not even an orchestra could wake him up. Hmm, though waking him up could be some interesting shenanigans, but... Alistair had made it a rule for himself to go for a very specific walk on days such as this. A relatively short one that avoided large crowds. And most importantly, those garish V-brand stores that showed that TV had 24-7. There, at a corner, was a tiny frozen yogurt store. It was a perfect little slice of heaven for the radio demon. Even if it still managed to be something after his time and quite tacky. Ah oh well... It were the little things in life. And the little convenience. It were the little things in life. And the little convenience is born out of that pesky new technology. Microphone cane in hand, he made his way to the street. Alistair discovered the adorable little parlor on his second day at the hotel but didn't go in just yet as he saw himself above it. However, after some deliberation on a strangely hot day in hell, he decided to enter. And he liked it, against all his expectations. From the moment Alistair had entered the parlor, hearing soft piano music, smell of fresh fruit, with not even a hint of blood, A large ceiling fan was buzzing on the ceiling, even though it wasn't needed as it was quite cool in the establishment already. There was a jukebox with a sign that read, out of order in the corner, and the decoration was kept relatively minimalistic, mostly white with smooth edges, though considering most other places in hell were either purple and red, or black and red, just a lot of red. This was an interesting, almost gimmick. At the time when he had first come in, no other demons, minus the rather charming little girl behind the counter, were present. You were the owner of the establishment, a little demon called a mania. Truth be told, the fact you were a mania was the reason there weren't that many customers. As such, you had instantly jumped to serve him. Especially since back then you didn't know what kind of monstrosity had lowered himself enough to actually enter your parlor. Manias were a subspecies of frenzy demons. Both being quite avoided by other demons due to their tendencies. Frenzies and manias were both known for their sudden transformations into grotesque monsters when certain triggers were applied to them. But frenzies had their triggers based on tangible things, such as drugs, certain foods or actions. Manias were more volatile, as their triggers were harder to pinpoint. As manias transformed based on emotions such as fear, arousal, happiness, or sadness. Any singular emotion could be a trigger for a mania. While frenzies looked human, just had white glowing eyes and teeth of long canines, manias had void black eyes and jet black razor sharp teeth that could easily tear through flesh even without transforming. But when Alistair entered your parlor, he wasn't afraid. And after actually enjoying his first ever 
Froyo, as you called it. He instantly decided to become a regular. But now, as he was about to enter, he noticed a small group of shark-faced ruffians through the glass window of the shop. His eyes narrowed, and he was about to barge in simply because he saw this as an inconvenience and that he could not allow on a schedule. But then, something interesting happened. As you were pushed into a corner, the radio demon picked up a strange static coming from the shop, and so he took a step back. Looking left to right, it seemed his presence alone was enough to keep any curious eyes off of this. So this was a show just for him. He grinned. One of the ruffian demons pushed you to the ground. It seemed as if he was about to do something unspeakable, which the demon regretted the moment his claws ripped off your shirt. Violently, your back ripped open, splattering your black blood all over the surroundings, blinding the demons temporarily. Alistair mused. Your torn apart body was lying on the ground, just some skin, some muscles, hair and clothes. Snapping his fingers, Alistair used his powers to lock your front door. And while the thing you had become didn't recognize him, he still gave you an affirmative nod and a little wave as you looked at him. Your mania form had the vague silhouette of a starved woman wearing a tattered black dress. The dress itself being left over skin of your original form. A thick layer of tar-like black blood was covering your body. Your fingers had turned into large, long, metallic spikes, which you used to attack your tormentors. Almost blindly, but there was a method to the madness. Alistair mused. Sure, your demon form wasn't tall, it certainly was quite impressive and bloody. And fast! He could just barely make out that you weren't, in fact, teleporting just really quickly on your feet. Your claws tore through the three men like butter as you blindly turned them from muscle-bound bullies into minced meat. It just so happened that your trigger emotion was she and utter terror. It actually was quite perfect for an innocent appearing little thing like you. You'd be perfectly safe serving your, um, froyos, while actually being able to turn anyone to shreds who dare to threaten you. And Alistair had to admit, your cutting technique was quite excellent. Even if the thing you had become was a bloodthirsty creature with no sense for remorse. But what he loved about the show was how you played with your food. You first killed the biggest one. And you kept the one who almost defied your body for last. Which Alistair had to admit was quite a classy move. Licking his lips, the radio demon leaned forward. Your two surviving victims attempted to flee, only to be met with the smiling Alistair and a locked door. They try to fight you, which caused you to dismember their hands and then their arms. Alice had heard that frenzies lost all senses and just blindly devoured everything, but it seemed that manias just became incredibly sadistic. The entire spectacle lasted ten minutes causing the windows of the parlor to be almost entirely engulfed in demon blood. And so Alistair had gotten a little closer. Since your hands were big, long knives, you were face first in demon guts. But you weren't eating, no. Hmm, a little disappointing. 
And that's when Alistair decided to hop in and join the fun. To a surprise, you didn't instantly attack him on sight as he entered through the door. You were simply too occupied with whatever you were doing. Um, Rupture, dear. You don't play with your food. Your head made a loud crack as it turned 180 degrees to stare at him. Well, perhaps you aren't seeing them as a meal just yet. On second glance, maybe in your manic state you still believe them to be alive. And as such, you are still stabbing and biting. Alistair took one step too close to you. You screeched like a broken record, a noise Alistair quite simply did not enjoy. And as he was busy cringing at the sound, he almost gave you the opportunity to slash him, yet he sidestepped. And chuckled. <laughs> Rupture, darling, you almost hit me. You went for a second attack, and that's when the radio demon hit you in the stomach with his cane. So quickly, that not even your heightened senses made you dodge. Like a slab of raw meat, you slammed on the ground, face first, growling and twisting and turning in pain, sloshing in the blood. While Esther swiped through it with a finger, licking it. Mm, mm, mm. Quite delicious. Such a shame to let it go to waste. Such a shame you don't have a taste for this. Once again, you went for an attack. Careful, darling, you almost tore my suit, and I just fixed it. He mused as you slammed your head into one of the tables, knocking yourself out completely. Ah, that was fast. Alistair looked around. The parlor was ruined. Though, strangely enough, despite what just happened in here, the bar with the froyos was still completely clean, so out of this little black creature you had become was, it still had enough sense to keep its hands off of the merchandise. Alistair respected that. As a matter of fact, he respected it so much that he hummed happily. He then walked up to the glass door, turned the open sign to closed, before gingerly picking you up. Your slimy black form writhing unintentionally in his arms as he carried you into the back rooms of your establishment, lying you down gently on the floor. Meanwhile, he ordered his shadows to clean up the place. With a long stretch, he then proceeded to sit down on your employee's sofa. The back room was actually a little cozy living space with a small mattress on the floor behind a desk. Next to it was a metal locker with spare clothes and uniforms. And another metal door led into what was most likely a walk-in freezer. Well, this place was probably a health code violation if this was Earth. And actually pathetically cute in hell as it seemed that the parlor was both your job and home. Uh, so interesting, he mused after a while. Your body was changing back. The black sludge he assumed was your own blood, after you shed your skin, was slowly taking on the appearance of regular skin. And it wasn't long until you ordered one of his shadows to... Put a blanket on you. Just to cover up your shame. It was some time later when you woke up. With a quiet gasp, breathing heavily, you stared at the ceiling. You felt something soft around you, and you were still lying on the ground in your office. You seem cold, darling. That's why I brought you one, muttered Alistair. Scared, you turned your gaze towards him, 
He was reading a book casually in one hand. Anister? I mean, sir? What? What happened? Wait, did you save me? His eyes moved from the book to you. In your normal form, you were such a delectable little treat. Pearly white skin that felt incredibly soft and white sleek hair that made you look more mature than you actually were. You then sat up straight as you remembered the gang members. It was then that you also noticed you were naked. You blushed hard as you instantly could tell what happened and you broke out in tears. Uh, darling? I did it again. I just want them to leave me alone. Alistair stood up, seeing an opportunity for a deal. Rupture, darling. Tell me about your woes. You sniffled. <laughs> These gang people want protection money, but because I'm... Because I'm this... You move to point at your face. I can't pay them. It's too much. And when they threaten me, I, I ruin the entire... Oh, cut me parlor. You were about to jump up, but else to place the hand on your shoulder. Don't worry, darling. I dealt with that. Wait, you killed them? I didn't turn? He smirked. No, you did. Oh, God. Every week I ruin my entire parlor, and then I wake up nestled in a small pile of their meat and blood. You put your hands on your face as you shivered. You had terrifying nightmares whenever you did this. I, 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 I know I will be safe. I know this thing in me protects me, but I don't want to hurt anyone. No one but breathing filth got hurt, darling. I made sure of that. One time I woke up in the street. Not only did I have to wear the torn clothes of whoever I turned into a sleeping bag, but I also destroyed my entire shop. Did you really fix everything? Alistair nodded. Of course, darling. When did you come? He thought for a moment and then looked at your clock. Hmm. I came when I have decided to taste some of your cream. Froyo. Darling, please. That name is... Sorry. Beneath me. He didn't have to say it out loud. And I just saw the beginning of your confrontation. Curious about what happens next, I merely made sure no one interrupted you. In exchange for a beautiful display of savagery, I decided to clean your parlor free of charge. Though, what you showed gave me a few ideas, darling. The two of you went silent. It took a few minutes until finally you spoke up again, blushing. I'm... I'm still unclothed, you muttered. And Alistair chuckled darkly. You lied back down, embarrassed, making sure to pull the blanket up to your chin. I'm, I'm glad you're my customer, you said finally. Well, I, I know many who would disagree. No, 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 I, I mean it. You're regular, something I never had before. Everyone is too scared to make me lose myself. They don't want to interact. Most of my froyo therefore gets thrown away. Oh well, at least you keep stuff clean, darling. So, how often do these things happen? Almost once per week. Sometimes they take two weeks to come. Alistair raised an eyebrow in surprise. Really now? I never smelled blood in your shop before. 
I suppose I'm a good cleaner. The Rady Demon blinked, and then you nodded. He was having an idea suddenly. Wait! You leaned up again, quickly crossing your arms as the blanket fell off your chest. You do deals, right? He smirked. Can you keep me safe? And what do I get in return, darling? Froyo? He leaned back, thinking. You didn't ask how to keep you safe, and so he chuckled. Well, I do love your cream, darling, but that isn't enough. <gasps> Please, you said, getting on all fours like an obedient, worthless hole. I, I do anything. Darling, here's a free tip on the house. Never say that in hell. Everybody takes it very serious. Your lips quivered. He leaned forward, with a shit-eating grin, placing a hand on your chin. But you're lucky! I like pathetic little things like you. They make me feel so... superior. A little bit of Zavia rolled past his lips as he barred his teeth at you. You exhale through your mouth. Wait, were you two about to kiss? Of giving your body to him was all that he needed. Rupture. I want you to move your parlor into the Aspen Hotel so I can take better care of you. B -b -b better care? Mm hmm. His smirk was making you blush. You inhale through your mouth as he pushed his thumb past your lips with an excited hum. Your eyes widened, his claw brushed over your tongue, tasting like salt and soot. It was hard, scraping over your flesh, an unintentional hum escaping you as you suckled on his thumb like a horny teen. You leaned into his touch. Well, aren't you a good child? Your teeth poked into his skin for about a second. No teeth, darling, he mused. How was this so erotic, you thought? With a loud pop, he pulled his hand out of your mouth, and almost eagerly you crawled forward, pushing yourself against his legs in a begging way. Does this mean we have a deal? Yes, darling, I suppose it does. And then Alistair sighed internally. Do it for the ice cream, he thought. The radio demon suppressed the urge to roll his eyes as he pulled you up to his lap, his arms wrapping around your tiny hips. And then your lips touched. Well, he'd missed the walking part of his quiet days, but at least he'd get to taste of delectable frozen yogurts daily now. That was what motivated him enough to actually lower himself to go through with this. Kissing you. Pushing his tongue past your lips. Licking over yours. He could still feel a little bit of his own taste. How cute. And he allowed you to open his belt. Well, your desperation was also quite entertaining to him. Sure. He'd have intercourse with you, but only this once. Thank you for watching my video up until the very end. But before I say goodbye, I would like to thank all of my lovely darling butlers and stewards. Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Angel, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. And one last thing, 
I would like to thank all of my other lovely mates for being lovely supporters. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.